my music school was on the road. And uh, well, when I was 17, I was actually playing that guitar and this white violin uh, with Stephen Rapelli <laughs> on the road. Uh, we actually played Carnegie Hall that, that tour when I was 17. And we were in Johnny Carson. But that white fiddle is, is a fiddle that I grew up playing. And uh, my first teacher, uh, my first uh, primary mentor and teacher, Benny Thomason, uh, gave me that. And, uh, and it sounded great. Like it's just, I, could, I won all those fiddle contests on that fiddle. Um, and it had a unique sound and it was very robust. And, and when did the signatures come into play? And the sig well, so the, how that happened is that um, the white fiddle that he gave me back then was so ugly. Um, <laughs> my mother and I didn't know what to do with it. Like several people said, oh, you got to strip off that paint and then varnish it. And, you know, all that was going to cost a couple hundred bucks. And we got it for free and we were basically broke. I mean, we're poor. So we didn't do that. Then other people said, you know, if you like the sound, you might not want to mess with it. Just keep the white paint on there. The reason why I was painted because uh, Benny Thomason's um, neighbor um, had it as a barn decoration. <laughs> it was oh, the same it matched the barn. <laughs> barn decoration. That is truly a, a fiddle. <laughs> a real, a if it matches fiddle. the barn, it's a fiddle. It's a real fiddle. <laughs> it's a real fiddle. <laughs> and so, uh, my teacher Benny, this was back in the early 70s, up in uh, near Seattle, Washington. He was out in the country. He was in, uh, near uh, on the Klamath River. And that's where I would go to get my lessons. And he, Benny loved fishing. And so he would go fishing with his neighbor. And, uh, you know, they were doing their tackle and, you know, looking, you know, cleaning the fish or something in the bar. And he looked up and there's this white fellow. He says, you know what? I could use the parts off that because Benny um, fixed up fiddles. Like he would, you know, he would, he, a lot of old fiddlers did that. They would kind of like open them up and maybe re-graduate them. And but Benny would, did that. Says I could use some of the parts out there, and there was um, at that time I don't even think there was you know there was no strings or bridge or anything like that on there, or pegs even. So he said it might be easy to part maybe a top or a back on a, one of these old fiddles that I had that was too cracked you know too many cracks. But before he did that, he decided to fix that one up um, and put the pegs in the strings and the bridge and like you know his eyes just went like this and he's and then when I came down for my lesson I was 12 at the time. Um, the next week, he had it sit, hanging on the wall, and then it just happened to be my mother said, "I think, you know, Mark is ready for a, a new instrument. I mean, the one he's playing now is just not very good." And, uh, and, and you know, my mother noticed that he's got a lot of fiddles laying around. You're like, you know, what, what, maybe we can work out something, right? Yeah. And so I went, "What's that?" And that, <laughs> the, the, like, was pointing to this white fiddle on the wall. He goes. And he goes, you might want to check that out. <laughs> and then I picked it up, and it was just, it was my, oh, I loved it. Oh, wow. And so I played it for all those times, including with Stephen Rapelli. And I was the person that got to introduce Benny Thomas and Stephen Rapelli to, uh, to each other on that wow. tour. Wow. Uh, it was in Portland, Oregon in 1979, and I thought the earth shook when they shook hands. Yeah. Like, I was mm -hmm. so, you know, it was incredible.